President Muhammad Buhari has said that the Nigerians have the right to protest and make certain demands from their leaders. This was disclosed by the Minister of Youth and Sports Development, Sunday Dari, after meeting with the President at the Presidential Villa in Abuja. Relaying Buhari's opinion on the ongoing NSARS protest, the Minister said that the President had vowed to implement the reforms he promised. Dari also added that the President appealed to protesters to give government time to address their demands. It is time to move to the next stage. That next stage is dialogue, to sit at the table. You have put demands on the table, demands have been, have been met, you might have other demands, it is only dialogue. And that's, that's, that's been the way of all protests, the way of all conflicts, and it cannot be different in this situation. Government has a responsibility when it comes to protecting the lives, the liberties and freedoms of every other Nigerian. Where my right stops, the right of another Nigerian starts. The Nigerians in this country have a right to, to go out and earn a means of livelihood. Some, if they don't go out on a daily basis, cannot feed their families. So if they're stopped from going to feed their families, it also increases the insecurity. The minister said he does not sit on the National Security Council that would decide whether or not to deploy security forces to quell the protest, but that the use of force should always be the last option. The use of force um, is often the last, should always be the last option. And I think in this instance, I don't see us getting to the last option because we have a group of youth who are reasonable, who are smart, who are articulate, who are well-educated, and who are willing to have the, those crucial conversations with government to bring about the reforms, to monitor those reforms, to ask for accountability and transparency in government and good governance. Joining us now for a conversation on this is Mr. Ilumona Onoja. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much for having me. Tell us what is happening in Abuja as the, la as the last time you were at the protest ground. Um, it was peaceful first and then became violent. Um, a group of people who had re have repeatedly tried to break up, up the protests, who were obviously paid to do so, a group of people um, with motivations, financial and pecuniary motivations to be violent and to use weapons to attack and try to disperse the crowds have um, were able to raise sufficient enough numbers yesterday to cause substantial chaos across the country. Well, not well, yeah, across the city. Let me speak for Abuja. They um, deployed sticks and stones, um, cutlass, uh, cutlasses, knives, daggers, and machetes. And then um, they also set um, more than, they set quite a number of cars ablaze yesterday. And all this was designed to be able to stop people who have peacefully protested and raised um, questions about the um, about the way that, that there's been policing and policing methods of, of government thus far for so many years. I mean, it was just, the violence yesterday was just orchestrated to be able to suppress that. It raises um, very high levels of distrust because these people were being moved around in police vehicles, in government vehicles. Um, these people were being, there are videos, there's footage of them being paid and organized by, by um, police, a, particularly a policewoman in more than one who was moving around to several pressure points. And then despite the statements by the, um, Mr. Sunday Dari and then the IGP and then the Vice President and President Buhari about people having the right to protest, we have footage of policemen harassing, intimidating, beating up and then being very brutal and high-handed in their in their conduct yesterday and um, over several points in the course of the last two weeks. Um, so there's a, this, well, we're here today. We're, it's quiet at the moment and we don't know what the day holds. All right. But the, that's what the, a rundown of what it seemed like yesterday. Now, Mr. Nodja, the, the narrative in some quarters is that the uh, protest has been taken over and of course infiltrated by uh, hoodlums in, in their numbers. Um, how do you think this affects uh, the peaceful protest uh, going forward? And, you know, is it maybe also time that some people might mention that it should be suspended um, until they take control of the city or, or the uh, 
security forces rather, are able to calm things down and take control of the city again? I would say, I would say this. Um, I do not think that the protests have been taken over by violence. I think that there has been violent conduct. At no point in time have there been protests that have the, has the violence emanated from any group of protesters. It hasn't happened. What has always happened is a group of other people who have been paid, who have been organized to come and disrupt the protest, mobilize themselves to the protest venues and then do so. The protests have not been taken over by any violent conduct at all. Protesters have always remained very organized, very peaceful, very law abiding. On the other hand, we have seen on several, occasion, on several occasions, people who say to us, who say on camera, who record videos and are posted, we've seen pictures, that there are people who are paying, and I'll use the word hoodlums, despite the fact that um, the government, uh, the commissioner of police says he's not comfortable with it, I'll use the word hoodlums, because that's exactly how they've conducted themselves, like hoodlums, like thugs, like criminals, who are receiving money to go there and go and disrupt the protests as much as possible. I was in the, the this particular footage you're seeing now, on the, they're displaying now on your screen. I was in that location in Abuja when these people attacked and destroyed these things. They were brought there in a, in a, in a government vehicle. They were brought there in a BRT bus. How did they gain access to a BRT bus? In Wuye yesterday, we saw a policewoman who had gathered the hoodlums. They were being moved around in a BRT bus, and she was paying them. Why, why is that going on? She was dressed in her police uniform. Why is that going on? I'm so, saying all that to say this, that there's an orchestrated campaign to cause as much violence within these protests as possible. And they don't come from within the protest. They always come from outside the protest. So, so how does so this we change? we lay it squarely at the doorstep of who, it, who is responsible for it, on the one hand. And on the other hand, what is the function of the police? What is the, really, this is part of what, why we are on the streets protesting. That the police is an inefficient organization. Inefficient in that, are we saying that people are being able to organize, to, um, to cause violence, they're able to move large sums of money, they're able to gather weapons of, um, from... All right, um, I'm hoping that he can speak on uh, Mr. Onoja, I'm hoping you can speak on how this changes the dynamics of the protest. You know, how do they think that they can continue uh, protesting peacefully if these elements keep showing up? Um, yeah, that, to, that, that's you know, a disrupt. fair question. We're yeah. hoping that the network will allow him a reconnect. What is also bugging my mind as he was talking um, was to get his opinion on, I mean, most of government officials from the very top are saying that most of the demands of the protesters have been met. Why are they still on the streets? Obvious um, efforts are being made. So I would like to get his unique perspective being on the ground. Mr. Nodja, I understand you're with us now. Can you hear us? Uh, I can hear you. Okay, okay um, let, let's go with uh, your question. Okay, I, I just wanted to quickly ask, how do you think all of this changes the dynamics of the protest? Um, if you still have people on ground who are willing to continue to protest peacefully, um, but there's always, well, lately, you know, the emergence of these hoodlums, as you've mentioned, um, how can the peaceful protesters continue to be out there um, protesting without, you know, being affected by these new dynamics across the country now, not just in Abuja? Well, the police should just do their jobs. Just do your job. Your job is to gather intelligence. Your job is to, is to um, prevent a breakdown of law and order. How can you do that? Be on site. Form a quadrant around the protesters. Make sure that nobody can attack them. It's really not very difficult. The question is, is there an incentive to do so? I don't think that these people have the willingness to do so. Otherwise, it's not impossible. These people are moving. The people who are attacking protesters... Um, or who are attacking government in, um, installations, are moving around a credible, a sizable amount of cash, are moving around a sizable amount of weapons. Are we saying that our police, our police is unable to gather intelligence in that regard and then act to break up the protests? Is that what we're saying? 
I mean, the helplessness that the CP of Lagos State displays, oh, there's nothing we can do, is part of the reason why people are on the streets protesting, demanding for better police methods, for a reform of the police, so that we're able to do something about it. All right, so um, Mr. Noja. If people are moving... Uh, Mr. Noja, I, I'm trying to uh, interject to uh, ask you about the... Um, comments made by top government officials from the president to the Senate president to the minister of uh, information, they are saying that some of the concerns being raised have been addressed. The people said they didn't want SARS. SARS has been disbanded. We now have SWAT, and SWAT is undergoing training. Uh, from what the government is saying, these people will not be a recycle of those who were former members of uh, the SARS, the disbanded SARS. And then panel of inquiry re um, report has been submitted. The other day we heard that the um, Attorney General of the Federation has received the presidential panel on police reform and a request for 35 police officers of the disbanded SARS be prosecuted. What more? is needed to get protesters off the streets. Because now it seems the requests are becoming um, multiples. There are no specifics anymore. There have always been specifics, and I'll clarify. Um, the quick wins that are available to governments have not been taken, and I, I can quickly tell you. Over the course of this protest, we've had at least 19 people across the country killed. None of the people who have killed the, any of these 19 innocent protesters or innocent people have been arrested. Um, none of them have been detained. None of them is facing trial or prosecution, on the one hand. Um, we're still seeing very high levels of high-handedness from police. We saw footage from yesterday where police is beating up people for simply exercising a constitutional right, a right to disagree with the way that they're governed. We have seen um, people, again, like I said, thugs being paid with the incentive to come and attack protesters and harm them and cause them grievous injury. None of that has stopped. Now, if that hasn't stopped, why should, these, why should anybody believe what government is saying about um, desires to do this, that, and the other, on the one hand? On the other hand, the first report that was submitted to President Buhari on the NSARS movement was submitted to him on the 3rd of July, 2019, more than 15 months ago. No, mate more than 15 months ago, on the 3rd of July, 2019. So if they haven't done anything from then till now, why are we to believe that they'll do anything now? Now, if anybody says that SARS has been disbanded, I'm sorry. I drove past the SARS facility in Abuja. I was in full operation yesterday when I drove past it. Full operation. There were SARS officers there. They were going about their duties. If they've been disbanded, how come that is happening? And then you're telling us that SARS has become SWAT, or that there's a SWAT team that is going to be um, instituted and um, trained and everything, that their training was supposed to start yesterday. The announcement of the new SWAT was done um, a week before, a week ago from yesterday. If anybody believes that you can set up a tactical unit and then put the logistics for the recruitment of those people and then commence training, set up an operational um, structure and then commence training in seven days. Please, the person should come. I'm the owner of the River Niger. I want to tell it to you because it's completely and totally impossible. And it just shows the culture of lies, deceit, a lack of sincerity, and a lack of transparency on the part of government. They're just out to, to, to deceive people. They're just out to deceive people. This isn't true. There's no way you can set up a tactical unit of any armed force anywhere in the world in one week. It is simply impossible. So when they tell us that thing about, oh, this is, um, we have a new unit and we're commencing training, it's, 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 an, it's a bold-faced lie, which just contributes to the lack of trust and the, uh, you know, and the unwillingness of people to believe anything that government says. Mr. Onoja, what next, um, moving forward, um, what other things um, do you expect to play out for, for the rest of the week um, as, of course, the protesters continue to make their demands? And also, how do you feel the protesters can also um, help ensure that they are not continuously infiltrated by these mischief makers um, who, of course, I would, you know, I, I would answer your second question first. 
Go ahead, I would answer your second question first. At, at all the protests that I've been to, we've, had, we've been broken up into teams. We've had a team for um, cleanup. We've had a team in charge of music and communication. We've had a team in charge. And so naturally, we have a team in charge of security. That team in charge of security bears a responsibility to search everybody as they join the protest and to remove anybody who is with any sort of weapon and to prevent the person from participating in the protest. That team is also responsible for removing people who do things like consume psychotropic substances such as weed and all that, or, um, um, or who bring alcohol or even bottles to the venues. That team repeatedly, you know, once we see anybody who is um, of questionable conduct, you know, ask, uh, and then where we get anybody who has any of these arms. I, I personally have been on a team where we have found people who came armed with daggers. And why are you here with a dagger? What are you coming to do here with a dagger? And so we round the person up and we give the person to the police. We don't have the constitutional authority to do anything. And we insist that nobody is going to meet our jungle justice on our watch, seeing as jungle justice is one of the things that we're fighting against. So once we round up any, such a, sort of, um, any people like that, we hand them over to the police. What the police does with them thereafter is what we don't know. And we're unable to follow up with, because I mean, now we now meet levels of opacity. But that's, that's the best we can do, is to continue to raise awareness and to say, you know what, this is what the, and everybody knows right now in the country, that there's a plan afoot to continually attack um, protesters. It's up to the police to do their jobs. And the police, they, that, that's, it, it has to come back to there, which is part of the reasons why we're on the streets protesting in the first place. The police are not a helpless entity. They're, well, they're, they're an armed organization that have the critical assets that should be able to prevent and, pre and prevent the breakdown of law and order and to protect innocent people. They have a responsibility to do their jobs. They should do their jobs. All right, um, Mr. Elomona Onoja, we thank you very much for joining us on The Breakfast this morning. And please be safe you while having. you protest. Yeah, thank you very much for having me. You're welcome. I don't Strong know. Points. Strong points, yes. Um, the police um, have the responsibility to protect protesters. They have a responsibility to ensure that, you know, things remain peaceful. And I said this earlier, you know, it is left to them to ensure that um, if there are certain elements in, in those crowds that are causing uh, mayhem and chaos, it's, it's left to them to ensure that they fix those things and they, they, it remains peaceful. It also is an eye-opener to how poorly equipped our Nigerian police force is, um, how poorly equipped you know, our security agencies are, really. Um, how do we stop you know, rioters? How do we stop mischief makers without using live ammunition? What uh, somebody said have? something the other day that I'd just like to reiterate on here, and um, uh, maybe just leave it there. That I think one of the people who are championing um, trying to manage logistics on uh, Twitter, she said something that caught my attention, that... Um, She said something that caught my attention. I beg your pardon for my silence a bit there, that um, when action, when some people want action to be taken, it will be taken to the highest level until those people decide that indeed there is need for a change, um, it might all be futile. I hope it isn't, but it might all be futile if that decision, those people who should make those brave decisions are unable or unwilling to do it for some political Seven. reasons. Um, I, 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 I'm, to be honest, I'm, I'm really trying to understand how difficult you know, this is. Uh, it, all of this maybe could have ended last week, could have ended three days ago, could have ended five days ago. Um, Do you think if the president speaks as he's being I, 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 I think that, that it, I think it, I, I don't think that effect. would hold a lot of water anymore. I think, yes, it is great to see the president, you know, com, coming out to uh, share his thoughts and give orders. But, you know, until action, and I think that's what the people are asking for, action, until we can see that there is actually action, um, these, you know, speeches, these press releases, these statements from, from you know, spokesmen, uh, men and women, you, you really don't mean much. <laughs>